Well, we can welcome back to the radio room. Still looking at this heat kit SB220. Um, and from the previous video and stuff, you can remember we're looking at trying to replace the wafer switch down in there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take off the front panel of the radio for two reasons. Um, one, the nuts that are holding that wafer switch in place are somewhere down in there. I can't get to them, so I'm going to have to take the front plate off so I can get in there. Two, the problem that this amplifier is having is that it's missing um, 10, no, yes, 10 meters. Uh, the owner's thinking it's not even hooked up, so we're going to check that. And two, they said it, it was down on 15 meters, wasn't producing full power. So I want to go ahead and check this, that wafer switch down in there as well. Make sure everything's hooked up to where it's supposed to be. Uh, make sure these input tuning circuits are hooked up all to the wafer switch, um, especially for the 10 meters and the 15 meters. And in order to do that, I really need to get the faceplate out of the way. Um, I've already got the knobs pulled off the front of the radio. Uh, those three should be the only ones that I need to remove to be able to take the front faceplate off. And then I can get in there, I'll unhook this uh, portion of the the output circuit here, and we'll be able to pull that that wafer switch off the end of the, the shaft down in there. Then I'll also open this up more so I can get in there, and I can check the contacts on that wafer switch. Make sure they're hooked up to the right portions uh, of the input filters. And, and clean that out a little bit in there, um, get some of the, uh, the dust and everything out of that area. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get this off, and then we'll see if we can't take a look inside of there um, and kind of see if there's anything that's just obviously messed up, um, not connected. Um, if, if everything's connected, we'll see what, what needs to happen as far as finding out why this thing is not doing 10 meters I printed out the schematic here and this right here this is all of the input filtering um, if you won't go down here here's RFN when it's re in receive it literally just connects the antenna or the R the the input to the output so your receive signal just goes and right to your radio. When you go to transmit, your power comes in here. Um, when the amplifier is put into transmit, uh, either by switching um, from the radio, a signal from the radio saying, hey, we're about to transmit, or if you use a foot pedal um, or even... Um, like this one has a soft key in it. This solenoid right here pulls these three switches all to transmit mode. It'll take the RF input, connect it to here, and from there it goes up and goes to the input uh, filtering. This wafer switch right here on the input filtering is that one so after it goes into here it'll go through the proper input tuning and that basically helps provide a match to the radio and to make sure everything's going through um, with the right filtering before it goes to the actual amplifier so after it goes in here comes in on this pin right here depending on where you have the band switch Connects it to, let's see, 10 meters. Uh, that should be, no, eight. No, I'll start at the bottom. 80 meters, 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 meters, 10 meters is what that does. Right now, uh, as the switch is set in the schematic, you can see it's 80, 80. So it comes in on this pin. Runs through this half of the con 
contactor, the rotor. So it comes in, goes to this pin here, which comes out right here, goes down, goes through the 80 meter filter, comes back in up here. It's a good thing that that's focus. When it comes into here, it rides this other part of the rotor to this pin here, which goes out, up, and to the cathode. It's also, if you look at this, we got the cathode, it's also the filament. It, the cathode and the filament um, run on the same line because this is a uh, directly heated tube. So it's modular, it's, the input of the tube is on the cathode. This is a cathode input tube. It's got grounded grid set up on it. So this switches which one of these filters it goes through and then it before it goes to the amplifier, the tubes to be amplified. And of course, uh, it goes out through, we got some parasitic filtering, comes out here. This is your output filtering right here. Um, this makes it so that it best matches for a 50 ohm impedance on the output. So this is the one that we're suspecting has the problems down here that I got to get out. So, um, once the output comes out, comes down, comes down, comes down, comes down. And as you can see, it comes down and then goes to the output. And of course, when these are all pulled over with that relay, it's connected right here to the um, output antenna right there. So this could be a problem as why as 10 meters doesn't work this could also be a problem on why there could be lower output on 15 meters maybe even 10 meters but i have a feeling if it's doing absolutely nothing on 10 there may be a problem in here either this isn't hooked up to the wafer switch or the wafer switch is bad so like i said i'm going to take the front of the amplifier off see if we can't get down into here we can clean it up we can inspect that wafer uh, switch and it'll also give us access to the nuts that will uh, make it easier to get that back wafer out so um, I'll be back in a little bit after I've taken this uh, kind of apart take a look at things and we'll see where we go from there bye for now